Welcome to the tutorial about Entwine. In this video, I'm going to go over the test from here functionality as part of Twine using Harlem. That's a little bit of a complicated sentence, but the reason why I phrased it that way is because the functionality provided to us is from Harlow, but we are using it through the test from here button that's within Twine. So let me show you what I mean. So whenever we're editing passages, we have undo, redo, tag, size, rename, and this button right here, test from here. The test from here will start the story from that particular passage and also put it in debug mode. So pretty commonly, when we have complex stories or we have lots of different style stuff going on, particularly things like enchantments within Harlow, we often want to test things from a certain perspective or start it from a a particular passage. And this allows us to do it, but as soon as we start doing it, it's going to show us lots of information that can be really confusing for beginning users. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it to show us what it looks like. So it's showing us the result, enchanted, enchanted text right here, and it's also got a little bit of a menu down here. And the first thing it's going to show us is variables, that's the default right here, and we can sort by type, name, scope, and value. So remember, when we're talking about variables within Harlow, we have multiple types of values. Put another way, we have lots of different data structures we can use, things like data maps, data sets, and arrays, and of course also strings, and also things like numbers. So we can sort things by the type, and right here I just have one, or the name, or the scope. So sometimes, especially when we're using temporary variables, we might have them inside the hooks of other corresponding macros or, or their corresponding hooks inside hooks. So sometimes we care about the scope, that is, where it is available. Also, sometimes we just want to know the value. So this is the number one, an example is true. Next to this are enchantments. So remember, whenever we're styling particular things, there are a large number of macros that do enchantments, text size, text color, large number of them, text rotate among them. This will show us any active enchantments that are part of this particular passage. So I'm using scope right here for name tag. So that is the name of the hook I'm working with, text size set to two, and it is a changer macro. Now, at least in this current passage, there are no errors, but I can also particularly look at the source. Oh, how did I set this up? Okay, cool. This is all I've set up right here. So I have one variable, one enchantment, no errors, and of course, I can look directly at the source. The other thing this allows us to do is say what turn this is, and we're sitting at turn start. As we move through a story, particularly as we use things like the link macro or use links between passages, we are counting the number of turns. We often don't do a whole lot with this, but some games and some projects care about the number of plays or the number of turns. This is a concept dating back to very, very early Twine. So if you care about that, the number of turns, you can also examine that as well and get into the de debug view. The debug view will show us exactly how this is set up. Now, I want to do this and point out something in particular. This says startup variables. Startup variables may seem a little odd because it started right here. Oh, but variables over here, this passage has the startup tag. Remember, of course, that any passages with the startup tag will be run before the starting passage. So start right here is a starting passage, but I have a passage over here named startup, and it will then show us, hey, this ran first, and here's what happened. So it did the set. Let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, set example to one. First, there was a, so this is the very first thing that happened right here, set example to one, which is true. That's the very first thing that happened. Okay, now next happened right here. This was if. So we pull this up. This is the very next thing that happened. Okay, cool. Now let's move to next. If example one became one, so right here, example will be one, so this will be run first. You can then take the next step. One and one became the Boolean value true. One is one, that is correct. And move to the next. If true, it is true. Understood, let's move to the next thing. Oh, now we're over here with enchanted text, which notice is the name tag right here, running from enchantment. And notice right here, enchant, name tag, text size. I'm applying a uh, macro right here, change your macro to affect name tag. Notice text size two, enchantments, 
understood. So if we want to, we can use the debug view to walk through each thing step by step by step to see exactly what happened. Doing that, though, requires us understanding a bunch of other things that we didn't quite have or most people generally don't have when looking at this, which is to say understanding the difference between the types of values for variables and also how enchantments can work to different degrees and working with particular tags within Harlow. So we are using this debug view to walk, walk through this. Now I'm going to show this thing over here, the DOM, or what's called the DOM, the Document Object Model View, and it looks like this, which is an incredibly complicated view right here. This shows us all the underlying HTML, the document object model, of what Harlow produced. So notice we see sidebar right here. We see passage, include, expressions, expressions, hooks, and all kinds of things. Generally, though, we don't really care about that, but we might, in a much more advanced project, target those particular things or do something with that particular uh, uh, HTML. But unless this but at least in this example, we're not doing anything. So let's return back to where we were. So let's say I change this to zero and I test from here. So notice we're getting no output, but down here we see example is the number zero and that's exactly what we expected to see. Now let's introduce an error and I'm gonna test from here. Now we're gonna say set zero to zero and now it's getting really confused. So notice though there are no variables, which is correct, and there's also no errors. So pretty commonly test from here can't detect errors when we have not correctly written code. So something to be very careful of. It was not sure what that meant. So if I had an extra parentheses right here, test from here, notice this is not an error as far as it's concerned, but we've introduced a little bit of a problem here. So some of the errors are not always caught by these debug tool, and in fact are part of the common problems that we might find when we write in Harlow, which is why I did a previous video on talking about common issues we can run ourselves, get ourselves into, run ourselves into. That is, we can forget the correct symbols or not have enough or sometimes too many symbols in this particular case. So be careful about that. The test from here, the debug mode will not always catch those things. So we have right here, when we did test from here, a complete breakdown of what we expected to do. Sorry, I'm testing from over here, here we go. And now we have a setup right here. So remember then, as we're working through this, always double check things. Test from here can be an incredibly powerful tool, right? We can test directly from a particular passage, but be careful, we can get ourselves into problems as I've just showed right here where sometimes the errors are not always catching correctly. So it's always a good idea to balance test from here with build play and make sure things are set up exactly as we expect to see them, right? Is this the, the startup we expect to see right here? And if I change this back to one and build and play, we finally get enchanted text. So because we didn't get these in the previous example, this folded right here, this was zero, and so none of this stuff ran right here because we were never shown this, and of course, the enchantment was never run. So always double check, working with test from here, and now we see all of this, but if I go back over here and set this back to zero, we won't. Build from play, of course, shows us nothing, and of course, testing from here, will also show us nothing because example is zero and none of that code did anything. So balancing test from here with build play can be incredibly powerful. Use our knowledge of how Harlow works, right? Working with not only the startup tag, but working through build play is an incredibly powerful tool and also build test, which does the same thing we just saw, and also test from here and our knowledge of that which can be very, very powerful, showing us variables and enchantments and other things, but we always kind of rely on human knowledge under the hood to understand exactly what we're doing, checking for those common issues, double checking things like colors and everything matches the way it's supposed to, but test from here, another really powerful tool in our toolbox for better understanding debugging within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.